Hello and welcome everyone. Today I finally have the guide for you that probably many people were waiting for. How to play Frontline. Of course there are different strategies how you can play, of which I will show you my personal favorite and a few ways how you should absolutely not play. So let's go and see through a couple of them. First of all the classic Fortress Fortress strategy. Building a wall is for some players not enough, so they reinforce that wall with a second wall made of towers. It looks safe, but even Iron Age units of Europe like Swordmen, Legionnaires and Axemen can break through easily. This way has more downsides than upsides. Building it takes a lot of time and costs you many resources, which will slow you down massively when it comes to reaching the medieval era. Now if Iron Age infantry can already break through then medieval siege units will not have a problem at all. Do not cripple your own economy by building this extremely expensive and inefficient defense system. The second strategy that I see very often and always makes me laugh is what I call the Swiss cheese defense. Now you see, Swiss cheese is popular for as many holes in it. And this defense is full of gaps, you know, so it, it, it's a pun, you know. Oh. oh look, I just got my first comedy prize. The cost of the defense system is not the problem. The problem is that armored units like legionaries and even heavy spearmen can simply ignore the towers and go straight for your town hall. Towers are not amazing at dealing damage. To use them properly, they also need to fulfill a path blocking purpose. Delaying the enemy army so they cannot rush for the town hall is crucial. The more time the enemy troops need to touch your town hall, the more effective your towers will be at dealing damage and reducing their numbers, which will make repairing easier or even not necessary. And last but not least, the most common strategy of all, not building any towers or army. Then when the enemy army is attacking you, you write help in all chat. This is definitely the least effective strategy even when you follow it up with an ace up your sleeve, like rage quitting immediately or blaming your teammates. Now that we had a look at the failing strategies, let's look into two more successful ones. The classic strategy that is used by most competitive players utilizes houses as semi-walls around your town hall, which is sometimes combined with bulwarks, towers or some tiny bits of actual wall to seal one side off completely, so you can focus your defending army on the other side where the enemy might still be able to come in. Overall this strategy can be seen very often in tournaments and probably in 1v1 ranked games. And that's because there are many good things about it. Keeping your houses close to towers around your town hall for example maximizes the defense effectiveness of each tower. Now they are not only defending your town hall but also your houses and probably your farm too if you're smart. The cost of this defending strategy is rather low since it utilizes houses that you would have to build anyway and it minimizes the area you need to cover with towers, if that is what you were going for anyway. The only downside to this strategy is if the enemy comes to attack you with hard hitting troops like legionnaires or more than one army, your houses will not stand long and if you survive you will fall behind a lot because now you have to rebuild houses, the farm and the forge and maybe you lost some workers because your houses did only delay the enemy army and not stop them. Now what a strategy could be better than that? Of course no strategy will be more efficient or cheaper than the last one. However I really like using a strategy that is a bit more expensive but also more effective. I call it the Swiss pocket life, which revolves around building a pocket made of towers around your town hall. You know Swiss pocket life instead of Swiss pocket knife? <laughs> oh hey another comedy award for me. The idea here is that your town hall will be mostly open except for the pocket of towers and maybe one or two extra towers right next to the town hall, opposite of the pocket to decrease the attackable surface making repairing easier, and offer a great target to enemy troops like legionaries and light knights. Why is that good? Because you can easily send some workers into the towers to release them on the other side. Now they are in the pocket from where they can repair every tower and your town hall. So while your towers kill the attackers, their damage is easily counter repaired and focusing your workers to stop them from repairing is not an option. So as soon as half their army is dead, they will look for another target or just lose all of it to your towers. What is safe to say, your town hall cannot be destroyed. Surviving this will not be the problem. Defending the houses, farm and forge is a different matter. However, you can push the perception of your enemy slightly into sacrificing his entire army to your towers by keeping your workers hidden inside the tower until your town hall is at 25% HP for example. To make the enemy believe that he can take you out while ultimately achieving absolutely nothing but making you spend some resources on repairing while he loses all the resources he used to build his army. Plus, that threat is taken care of for you and your teammates. This strategy works best with Western Europe in my opinion. After all, they have the best towers in the medieval era regarding damage, 
range and armor values. A video where I did this strategy as Eastern Asia in the past can be found in the info card. Now that we have talked about the strategies, it's time to talk about the timing. When should you start building defenses? If you want to build the competitive defense system, you have to start in the Stone Age, because that's when you build most of your houses, usually. If you plan to go Europe, you can also build a few bulwarks after building a stone cutter and mix them with your houses. It's good to be prepared sooner than later, but if you use your scout well and see if the enemy is building fight pits close to you, then you should hurry. The Swiss pocket life on the other hand still works when you didn't expect to be frontline or a teammate in front of you dies or quits and now you have to take over frontline duty. But your houses are lined up to produce militiamen or partisans somewhere else. Make sure to build the pocket towards the enemy so the towers can start attacking sooner and block them a little bit from attacking your town hall right away. What faction should you play? I recommend Western Europe any day of the week because they have the best towers, best archer units and even trebuchets which cost no population in case you get besieged. But maybe you went Asia already which is still fine. In the medieval period, theoretically, both are fine. Maybe this will surprise you, but I'd recommend Eastern Asia over the Western Asia. Because of the towers? Yes. The Eastern Asian towers are, in my opinion, better due to their armor, alpha damage and accuracy. But you can argue for both. For example, the Western Asian towers can be upgraded into cannon towers in the late medieval era, which can help against industrial tanks and howitzers, but against infantry, they will more likely destroy your own buildings. And no matter what you do, always avoid going Eastern Europe in the front line. They have without a doubt the weakest towers and free militiamen are a cool meat shield, but for defending they won't cut it. And the Bronze Age archers you have access to in your barracks will also struggle. But this is a personal opinion. If you like to play it differently, then that's fine, and you shouldn't forget to enjoy the game while following guys like this. There's one more thing to say. Do not forget to pick up the archer damage upgrades in the forge when you're playing as Europe. They do increase the damage of your towers as well. For Asia, you can get the upgrades for the Bronze Age towers and the medieval Eastern Asian towers in the shooting ranges of the respective eras. Western Asia has tough luck. Now that we discussed the theory of the strategy, let me show you some examples of how it could play out. 